Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 17th HTML tutorial. In the last two tutorials, we've been talking about how to create HTML forms and uh, what elements we can go about adding to them, such as text boxes, password boxes, uh, buttons, radio buttons, uh, check boxes, and stuff like that. So I figured in this tutorial, the third form tutorial, uh, we're going to be talking about two new elements that we can add to our HTML forms, uh, which are drop down menus or select menus. Um, which allow you to basically select a couple options. I only put in two options here, but you can have as many as you want. Um, and text areas, which are basically giant text boxes. So uh, if you'll notice here, this one is quite big, and it can actually be resized uh, in Firefox and in probably a couple other browsers as well to whatever size you want. And here we just have a button that sends the data to our still non-existent process.php page. So uh, let's take a look at the code here, and uh, I'll show you how to get this going here. So this is the code that we have for this. Um, so let's just erase it here and we'll start start from scratch actually. So let's save that, come over here and we'll refresh and you'll notice that our web page is completely blank. So uh, let's get to coding. So we're going to first enter in our basic HTML tags here. HTML, give it a header and then we'll give it our title here. And what we'll say here is we'll say uh, more HTML form stuff. And then from there, we're going to give the page a body. So we'll come over here, and here's our more HTML form stuff title in our blank page. I will just get rid of the stuff and just say more HTML forms. I believe the stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to be creating a new form. But before we do that, uh, let's just say that, like in our example that I had in the beginning of the page, uh, we're going to be sending, creating an email form. Um, it's not going to work, but it's just basically what the form will do uh, before the data is processed and parsed by the PHP or whatever language you're using. So uh, let's just create some text here. We'll use a header 3 again, and we'll say email page. So we'll save that, come over here and refresh, and here's our email page. Or we'll Actually, we'll call it contact us. Um, like we'll say that pretend that this is a, a page in someone's website here so we'll have our contact us page and what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll create a paragraph and we'll say please use this form to send us an email and we'll save that take a look and here it is so now let's go about actually creating the form so we're going to come over here and we're going to create our form tags and if you remember the the form tags do require that you use a beginning and ending tag or an opening and closing tag, however you want to say it. Um, and everything in here isn't, for the most part, isn't going to require an opening or closing tag, um, though one thing actually will. So let's come over here and we're going to indent this and we'll say input type equals. And then, okay, yeah, we'll do that. We're going to add a little bit more onto this. And then we'll say uh, input type equals text. And we'll say, uh, your, we'll say name. That way we, the people know uh, who the email is coming from. So we'll save that, come over here and take a look. And we have a name box here. And then we'll create uh, something that's new, unlike the input type equals text box here. We're going to give that a name as well. And if you remember that the name attribute that we're using within this uh, tag is what's actually being sent to the uh, PHP or the process page that we're going to be using, depending on what language you're using. Um, so if you're going to be sending data, it's important to have a name tag. So we'll call this uh, we'll call this name, or we can call it sender, whatever you want to do. We'll sender. So we'll come over here and we'll refresh. So here's our basically name form. So we can say our name, uh, and then we'll come over here and we'll create recipient. So we'll give it a paragraph break. See how that looks, and we'll say uh, recipient. And we'll now here's we're gonna, where we're going to be creating a new. Uh, a new thing here, and we're going to be using the select box or the uh, drop down menu. Um, and you know the drop down menu, they're all over the internet, so you've probably seen hundreds of them. So, uh, what we're going to do for that is it's technically called a select box or a select menu, so we're going to have to use the select tag. And just like the form tag, the select tag actually does have uh, a closing tag. We'll just bump that down here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have to create an opening and closing tag for our select menu and in between these two tags are going to be the options that we're going to have within the menu. So let's just save this, come over here and take a look at it. So you'll notice that our name is here 
and our recipient box is here but there's nothing in it and it's uh, actually really small so let's go about creating that so we'll come over here and uh, we'll give it an option and uh, the way to add options is just to simply say option and then we get to create a closing option tag and then we're going to say uh, value equals and let's say we want to have an option to send it to uh, person A, whoever that may be. Um, so we'll, ha we'll save that here, we'll come over here and refresh and you'll notice that still nothing happens but when we come over here in between these two tags we're going to enter in person A and we'll save it and when we'll refresh and you'll notice that now we have a box with our single option per person A. So if we come over here now and uh, we add another option so remember we use our option tag and our closing closing option tag and whatever goes between these two tags is going to be what's displayed within the drop down menu so uh, person A for the first one and it has a value of person A so what we're going to do is actually uh, just put a little uh, underscore in there and you'll see why in a second so option we're going to say value equals and we're going to call this person person B okay so now that we have that here what we're going to do is come over here and save and I just like before we have a blank option because the the uh, box is the the option tag is there but there's nothing in there to tell us what we're going to be selecting so uh, we can select it but it's not there so we're going to say person B we'll save that come over here and refresh and now you notice that we have person A and person B so now that we have that option there uh, let's just close that down there and make it a little uh, neater we're going to give our select option a name and we're going to call this uh, person and you'll see why again when we uh, actually go to submit the form. But the, the reason why we do that is because when we submit the form, we're going to need to have these values as the name. So it'll say name person equals person A or something like that. So uh, when it gets sent to the page, we know what data we're taking and what we're using. So um, let's just go ahead and adding our text box now. And if, if you'll remember from the beginning of the, t of the tutorial, we didn't have a small text box like we did previously. We had a pretty big text box. So what we're going to be doing for that is uh, not actually using the input type equals text that will give us a small text box um, we're going to be using a totally different tag and this is what this is called is a text area so it has its own set of tags it's not an input type so we'll say uh, text area and then we'll close it off with our text area closing tag you have to have a beginning and uh, closing tag so we'll save that come over here and take a look and you'll notice that now we have a small little text area which we can resize uh, and that's basically because of the browser allowing, allowing you to do that just add a quick space and we'll refresh and actually we're going to add a little message up here we'll say please enter your message save that take a look got to put another space and I'm just using the paragraph spaces like last time because I like the way that they uh, give it a decent amount of space unlike the break tag which will just bump you down right underneath it um, but if that's what you want to do go for it um, just personal preference here uh, so we'll refresh this and now we have please enter your message so uh, let's give them a bigger text box that we can use to enter the message with so we're gonna say text area and we're gonna come over here within the text area opening tag and create uh, some attributes here so we're gonna say um, first off we're gonna give it a name and we're just going to say uh, message body uh, because this is going to be the body of the message that the person is sending to the uh, recipient whoever that is person A or person B I guess and uh, we're going to say that we're, we're going to have some certain amount of rows and columns within this uh, so we can choose the size otherwise we're going to have the default size of uh, whatever this happens to be uh, that so we're going to come over here and we're going to say rows equals and then some uh, quotation marks and then we're going to say calls equals and then some quotation marks and in between these quotation marks is where we're going to put the number of rows or however many uh, we want this way in the number of columns or however however the distance is where we want uh, horizontally so for rows I'm going to say 10 and for columns I'm going to say 20 uh, though it's completely up to you whatever you think looks best um, and we'll come over here and refresh and here's a bigger uh, HTML box but I'm going to probably say maybe we can double it to 40 and uh, make it a little bit wider and this should be a decent box for someone to enter in a message um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add our submit button and we're going to say input type equals submit and we're going to give it a name name equals submit and we're going to give it a value value equals and we'll say send message 
or just send, sends good. And then we'll close off that uh, button. And before we do that, we'll put a space here. And we'll take a look at what this looks like. So now we have uh, a complete email form, um, complete with a name options so that we can say name is Jamie. We're going to send this to person A uh, or person B. And we'll just type in hi there. And uh, once we click send, it'll send it over uh, using either a post or a get variable. So we'll set that up in a second, but let's just come over here. And we're going to do one more thing with that text area. If you'll remember with the text area, and similar to the option here where we can have a, some text in between, you can do the same thing with the text area um, tags, which basically allows you to enter in something that will come pre or will pre-exist within this text box. So if you want the user to already have a message there, like maybe a template or something, you can enter it right in the text area here uh, like this. So let's say, please enter your message here. So we'll, uh, all you need to do is enter that between the opening and closing text area boxes, and it will show up within the actual text box when we refresh. So if we come over here and open this again, you'll notice that we have a pre-selected pre or basically pre-entered message um, it basically says, pre please enter your message here. The user can delete it and then proceed to enter their message. So let me just uh, set up how the form is actually going to work to show you how this will be sent again. So within our form tag here, we're going to give it uh, some attributes. And we're going to say action equals, and again, we're just going to use our process.php example. The page doesn't exist, um, but if it did, all these uh, values and names would be sent to that page to be dealt with. Uh, or processed, however you want to say it. So we're going to say process.php uh, and our method is what we're going to be concentrating on now. Uh, if you remember from the previous two, two tutorials, the method can either be get or post. Now it doesn't have to be in capital letters, but that's just how uh, kind of, we kind of tend to do it. Um, so for a post method, if you'll notice that when we enter in some information, we'll say ASDF, ASDF, and click send. Ooh. It shouldn't have sent, got sent like that, so we'll just refresh this real quick. Delete all that variable information from here. And we'll refresh, and you'll notice that when we enter in our name and our message uh, with a post variable, nothing will be sent because we're using uh, a post, and that's good for when you're using like sensitive information like uh, passwords, credit card numbers, and anything else that you don't want to be uh, sent over here. So if we change this to a get variable, and we refresh, you'll notice that, just uh, refresh that there, and you'll notice that when we enter in our information, so we'll say Jamie person A, and then we'll say our message is hi there person A, and we send it, the, you'll notice that all of our information is actually being sent right here in the open uh, using our sender equals Jamie and person equals person A, and the message body and everything is included in here. So that's not something you're going to typically want if you're sending personal data. Um, but if you're doing like a search engine or you're doing something like uh, sending a, the name of a particular web page or something like that, something that isn't personal and uh, you don't want to worry about getting viewed by others, uh, you can just do that. There's a couple other reasons to use them um, and you can uh, kind of look those up if you want to. But this is basically how we're going to create our third HTML form, which is an email form. Um, obviously this form isn't going to actually work until we go into the uh, PHP or whatever language we're going to be using to process it. But this is just a basic outline of how to go about doing that. Um, so, I actually, uh, after I created the last tutorial, I went on to W3Schools and looked up some more things that I could do with HTML forms to show you. Um, so I'd suggest if you're interested, head on over to W3Schools and check out some more stuff, um, especially related to forms, since these are what these tutorials are about. There's other attributes and elements and stuff uh, and tags that you can use with creating forms, um, but these are just probably some of the more prevalent ones and some of the ones that I figured I'd show you guys. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to send them in to me. Uh, you can leave them in the comments below. And uh, if you're interested in me creating a specific tutorial, just please feel free to let me know. Um, also, please feel free to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash jamiemcg uh, for my personal Twitter and for the Technical Cafe Twitter, which will notify you about all these videos and blog posts. Uh, feel, please feel free to follow that at Technical Cafe. So thank you for watching and have a great day.